let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and his Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God's exclusive duty. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba Olumba Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, John chapter 3, verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Second lesson, Romans chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them, which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Golden text, James chapter 4, verses 11 to 12. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Quote, Beloved, I want to make you understand that there is a difference between a gospel practitioner and a teacher. You saw so you who claim to be a practitioner and you who claim to be a teacher should know exactly what and who you are for the two mean two different things. The most important thing I want you to know is that God is the only teacher. You have been forewarned that you should not call anyone teacher or rabbi for we are all the practitioners of the gospel because he is the only teacher while we are brethren. Our Lord Jesus Christ said that he came not to judge the world but to save. Ironically, a lot of you have arrogated to yourself the position of a judge. But you have to understand that none of you has been given that prerogative of a judge. You only came here to learn, to hear the word of God and put them into practice. The assignment of God is to teach and finally judge. While that of man is to listen to the gospel and practice it, God alone is the judge. Your duty is to spread to the entire world all that you have heard from God and show people the right way to God. It is not your duty to judge your fellow human being, for when you query someone why he has done a particular thing, you are judging instead of bringing them to God, knowing fully well that the right to implement judgment is exclusively that of God our Father. Read the first lesson again. First lesson, John chapter 3, verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Brethren, if you examine the system of the world and her conventional churches, 
you will see that they are all out to judge and condemn. They commit evil against one another and condemn others' behaviors. They go about discriminating, seeing one church as being better than the other. This they do because they have failed to understand that judging is the exclusive duty of God. The scripture has even confirmed this by saying that God did not send his son into the world to condemn or judge, but to salvage, emancipate, rectify, and in fact, do all good things for the world to be saved. You have always been told that you should not only be the hearers of the gospel, but also the practitioners. No man has any right to judge his fellow brother. Your duty is to correct, but not to condemn. You are not to judge any person for not expressing love towards his fellow man. You are not to condemn anybody's behavior because that is not your assignment, but that of the Father. He is the only one who knows those to be condemned and those to be justified. If you go out, if you go out to a person's house, and discover that his floor was not swept, do not caution him for not sweeping the floor. Rather help him sweep the floor. If there is no water, help him fetch it instead of condemning him for not having water in the house. By doing this, you will be a practitioner, which is your duty, and not to drag yourself into a divine area of judgment. Any man that judges one another over his misdeeds is not a practitioner of the gospel, but has already made himself a judge. No church denomination has the right to judge or condemn any man. No man on earth has ever been granted such permission to judge or litigate any motion against any person. Your duty is to practice this gospel and make sure every man tries as much as he can to practice the word of God. For the duty of preaching the word of God and showing people the gospel in their correct perspective have been arrogated to you. God is the only judge and the only teacher. We examine the second lesson. Second lesson, Romans chapter 2 verses 1 to 3. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same thing. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Brethren, as many as go about judging and condemning people cannot be excused because they have never for once been made judge. The same judgment they have meted out will also be meted on them because it is not the hearers of the gospel that are justified, but those who apply corrective measures instead of judgment. There is only one lawgiver and only one judge. Aside from this, every other person is supposed to be the practitioner of the word of God. Love one another. Be truthful unto one another. Humble yourself and be patient. These are all that you are enjoined to do, not to go about judging and condemning others. 
else you will be invariably condemned and judged. The scripture has made it clear that we should not all be teachers for the punishment to be meted out on teachers is so great. In James chapter 3 verse 1 it says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Brethren, this proves that God is the only authorized teacher. All those who judge their fellow men are condemned because they have indirectly judged themselves. Let us not put ourselves in the position of a teacher or of a judge, but we should try as much as we can to make ourselves the practitioners of the word of God. If our Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to judge, nobody could have been saved, but he came so that we may be saved through him and at the end become the practitioners of the gospel of God. It is popularly said that there is no sense in being tricky because it deprives one of many good things. So when you condemn other churches and people for not doing this or that, were you made a judge or are you just arrogating to yourself the position of a judge? Brethren, it is meaningless to quote and cite Bible portions when you are yet to practice any injunctions. You should rather be a preacher. By example, hearing the word of God is not enough to save you. Neither will you be saved through preaching the gospel. If you are not a practitioner, then... Salvation has eluded you. You should not deceive yourself by going to preach to people to forsake sins and feel that you will be saved if you are still wallowing in sins. For you will be judged even by the same preaching that you deliver to others. But if you are to keep to the injunctions of God and practice what you preach to people, you are saved. Read the golden text again. Golden text, James chapter 4, verses 11 to 12. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Only God saves, brethren. A vital question is raised in this excerpt. Who are you? Man that judges another. Who are you that speak evil against your brother or, or the law? A certain, a certain man is recorded in Luke chapter 12 verses 13 to 14. He went to Christ and this conversation ensued. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Brethren, having learned this, let us try to be the practitioners of the gospel and not a judge, a divider, or the one that condemns another. Do not for any reason speak evil against your brother, be he a younger person to you, whether he is poor or illiterate, no matter his standard, you are not authorized 
in any way to condemn him. God is the one and only lawgiver and judge. He alone can save and can destroy. Who then do you think you are to judge your fellow man? Jehovah God and his Christ is the only one who has conferred upon himself the title of a judge, teacher, and a lawgiver. Dear, these titles have not been granted to any other being on earth, not even the angel. So you should, from this day, know that your duty is to practice the words of God and nothing more than that. Therefore, everyone that judges the law does not obey the law but is judging it and by so doing he may he has made himself God. Here in this kingdom people are not judged or condemned or spoken evil against. As such you are given a free hand to practice the gospel, love one another and speak good of one another at all times. John one of the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ told him, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followed not with us. That was in Luke chapter 9 verse 49 to 50. From the aforesaid, let us refrain from judging others castigating people and calumniating others. For we were not called for this purpose, but we were called to practice the words of God and to go out and preach the gospel to people and live an exemplary, an exemplary lives for others to emulate. In so doing, we will be saved and be justified. Beloved, it is said that a stroke of the cane is enough for the wise. He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit has imparted to the entire world. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.